Hello to you. In this video, let's learn about unemployment. So we're going to go over the four types of unemployment and uh, quickly how to calculate the unemployment rate. So in macroeconomics, unemployment is a very commonly used uh, indicator of how the economy is doing, specifically the labor market. So uh, before we get into what uh, the different types are, you got to know that we don't count everybody who's not uh, looking. Okay, so a discouraged worker is the term for somebody who doesn't have a job, but they're also not interested in working, right? So it might be a person who uh, just doesn't want to work and they just live with their parents or something. Might now, So <clears throat> don't want you to think that discouraged workers are necessarily losers. So think for a second, is there another type of person who doesn't need to work? Yep, that's going to be retirees. So retirees are technically discouraged workers. They have enough money that they don't need to work anymore, so they're not going to. Uh, might be a person who stays at home to take care of a kid or an elderly relative, or for whatever reason, they're just taking some time off, uh, some time for themselves, might be sick or something. Um, so those are discouraged workers. We do not count those in the unemployment rate. So there are four types of unemployment. Um, some people just say there's three, but there really is a fourth one. Uh, why do we care about this? Well, it's why people lose their jobs. And it's also why they can't find a new job. So uh, if you understand these, you can avoid uh, avoid them, right? Because being unemployed is, is not fun. So the first type is the type when somebody just enters the, the labor force, like a graduate, or maybe they've gotten fired or they quit their job. This is called frictional unemployment. You can think about this like they're in between jobs. So frictional unemployment uh, is when they quit um, or they got fired or they just... Uh, um, uh, ju just a recent graduate, okay? So fired, quit, or just entered the labor force. That's frictional. They're in between jobs. Next, seasonal unemployment. So there's some, some jobs have an off season. So for um, migrant workers, uh, there's an off season. And so uh, when the grapes are growing, they're employed. But when the grapes are not growing, they are unemployed. So they're seasonally unemployed. You might think about a teacher during the summer, or lifeguard during the winter, those are seasonal unemployment, right? This guy in July is seasonally unemployed, okay? Not that big a deal. Those first two really aren't that big a deal. The next type uh, has to do with a, a recession. So if something happens, and that's easy to imagine, something happens where people aren't going to spend a lot of money, um, there's going to be cyclical unemployment. So if people aren't spending in certain industries, uh, companies are going to fire workers, or the, really the term they're going to use is laid off. So layoffs uh, are as a result of cyclical unemployment. So uh, give yourself a second to think about, or pause the video, what would be uh, an industry that's more cyclical than another type of industry? Okay, and that's right. Uh, the retail industry, the travel industry, uh, those are very cyclical. Okay, when people, when the economy takes a break and takes a recession, people don't spend as much money, uh, there's going to be cyclical job losses. There's other types of jobs that are less cyclical. Those are going to be healthcare, government work, um, still a little bit cyclical, but not as much. Okay, So if the GDP starts to go down, you're going to see cyclical unemployment because of the lack of spending. Okay, Construction is another one. So if you start to see layoffs in the newspaper uh, or you see the word recession, think there's going to be cyclical unemployment. The last type of unemployment, this is probably the scariest type, this one's called structural unemployment. And this one causes uh, or is caused by some sort of structural change in the economy. So a long period of time, the economy is very different than it used to be. And you just think about it, if you talk to your parents about how it was 20 years ago, uh, they're going to talk to you about different jobs that people might have done. Uh, 50 years ago, you can think about that, or even 100 years ago. Okay, so this is a picture from Tucson. This is the Iceman. Technology has taken his job. He is structurally unemployed. Uh, and there's all kinds of jobs in that picture that you can think of that are no longer needed. If people continue there, they're structurally unemployed. Next, changes in taste. So if people don't like certain products, there'll be structural unemployment um, based on what people like and how they're spending. Lack of skills. There's millions of jobs for accountants and engineers and uh, in the healthcare industry, but lots of job openings because people lack the skills to get those jobs. Okay? And then finally, global competition. So you're, in this world, you're no longer co competing with people in, in, uh, in your community, but also people all over the world because we're all connected and uh, into different labor markets. So that's structural 
unemployment, those longer term changes. Okay, we have this term called full employment. It does not mean 0%. What it means is that there's no cyclical unemployment. So right up until a couple, well, a year, not a year ago, uh, right up until 2020, uh, the economy was basically, the U.S. economy was basically at full employment. There was no cyclical unemployment. Uh, coronavirus comes in and uh, lots of people lost their jobs. There's some cyclical unemployment. So now we're no longer at full employment as I make this video. Um, so it's okay to have frictional, structural, and seasonal unemployment because we want people to quit their jobs and look around and find new stuff. And we want them to graduate from college and high school and things. Uh, seasonal is okay. That's the bargain that you get uh, that you involved in when you take a seasonal job. And structural, we want the economy to change. We want jobs to, to become more technologically uh, innovative and so on and so forth. So that's uh, full employment, another important concept. Okay, so how do you calculate the unemployment rate? You just take the unemployed in the labor force, so everybody we're going to count, divided by the labor force, times 100, we get some kind of percent. So that's all you do. Uh, and if you want to see the unemployment rate, you can actually go to the Bureau of Labor Statistics. They're the ones that, that calculate it. You can see the data on when I made this. And you can get a whole bunch of data. You just click right there. And the unemployment rate in March of 2020. Well, this gives you very specific information. We don't need to spend too much time there. But 4.4%. Uh, so, ah, there you go. Let me hit the graph. And then you can also hit from over here. This is the Federal Reserve economic data. And you hit popular series. There's the unemployment rate. And you can see I mentioned the uh, coronavirus there. I'll make this a little bit more up to date. Okay, and so it's a decreasing unemployment rate. And then it jumps up right here. And it's likely to keep going up uh, after we make this as, as the U.S. economy enters a recession. So that's how to... Uh, the four types of unemployment rate and how to calculate them. Goodbye.